For millennia, fish have been one of the main dietary sources of humanity. As an abundant resource, they have secured the lives and livelihoods of coastal communities for generations. However, this heritage is now under threat. Human activities are increasingly disturbing the delicate marine ecosystems, reducing the fishing stocks. Overfishing is one of the main reasons for the observed changes. Una actividad que pueden matar, no tanto que esté a él a morir de por sí, pero sí que se puede cargar a actividad a pesca. The numbers are alarming. Although the fishing methods are more efficient than ever before, the fish catches over the last 50 years have continued to drop. Most of the fish stocks are now overfished and on a global scale. But this drama is unfolding in secret. The consequences of our actions are visible when forests are cut down. The effects of our daily decisions, responsible for a shrinking rainforest, can be captured and documented by satellites. But the decades of overexploitation of the fish stocks have taken place under the ocean's surface, invisible to the eye. Scientists have shown repeatedly that the looming disaster is real, and without controls, the fish stock decline would be even more rapid. You are creating or promoting uh, an impact in the, in the ecosystem. In a very short period of time, you will lose fish population, social, structure, and economic activity will end. That's clear. So, to make fishing sustainable requires the cooperation of all concerned, from fishermen to sellers to consumers and many others. This is their story. Primitivo has been a fisherman in Galicia for over 25 years. For generations, fishing dominated life in this part of Spain. His father and grandfather lived from fishing. Fishing is often the only industry here, and people depend on it. Everyday life is determined by fishing and what happens out at sea. And today, times for fishermen are not only difficult, they are changing. A miña máxima preocupación é que o sector se involucre máis na, na xestión dos recursos. Creo que sin eso, unha, pode ser unha actividad que tende a morrer e outra, pues pode deixar de ser o suministro alimentario de, de, da humanidad. The Spanish fishing village of Muros on the Costa da Morte is representative of many others in Europe. In the early morning hours, the small fishing boat Maria Rosa leaves the port of Muras. On board, Primitivo with two helpers. Previously, Primitivo focused on hake and tuna. Over generations, they were the main source of income. But today, these stocks are at risk. So the amount of fish allowed to be caught needs to be strictly regulated by quotas. They determine, on a yearly basis, how much fish can be caught in each region. My father caught more fish than me, but I also caught fish in another way. Now we have to compete, as I mentioned antes, with international international fishermen. In that time, the market was more local. Eh, co que traían a diario, pues, a, se daba para poder subsistir. Today, Primitivo catches octopus instead of fish. This is because the quotas for octopus are not as limiting as that for many fish species. But he knows that soon even octopus will be endangered. This is because many other local fishermen also have the same idea to catch octopus. This rapidly reduces the stock to dangerous levels. In the last 20 years, I see that the resource is growing, especially the resource more local, more sedentary, which doesn't have so big migrations. Regardless of his problems, Primitivo finds the EU fishing quota system basically correct. But in his eyes, 
the EU's bureaucracy does not react fast enough to changing local situations. And they do not know the regional situation as well as the fishermen themselves. Fishing quotas, also called TACs, total allowable catches, are one of the most powerful instruments of controlling the amount of fish being caught. Here, scientists have an important role to play. Pablo Carrera provides the necessary facts about the health of the fishing stocks. He is a scientist at the Spanish Oceanic Institute. Across Europe, scientists like him collect similar data, on the basis of which the catch quotas for the next season are determined. They make the invisible visible. The research vessels are on the high seas for weeks at a time. The scientists look for schools of fish and examine them very closely. What is the size of the fish school? How old and how big are the individual fish? Pablo and his colleagues know that their numbers and those from the other EU countries influence the economic future of tens of thousands of families living from fishing. But he also knows that without quotas, the consequences are clear. There would definitely be no fisheries to speak of in the near future. When we are talking about sustainability, you are promoting an activity which is, in the long term, sustainable. Why the other is not sustainable anymore? In a very short period of time, you will lose fish population, social, structure, and economic activity will end. For the affected fishermen, their very existence is at stake. But there is only one solution to the problem, sustainable fisheries. Only if the ocean resources are handled with care and remain healthy will the fishing industry have a future. One way to achieve this is through proper enforcement of what they catch. Pascal Savoré has the difficult task of implementing and enforcing the fishing rules, prepared on the basis of scientific advice to policymakers. His authority, the European Fisheries Control Agency, can follow larger fishing boats in European waters. The officials know where the boats are and how long they've been fishing, what they catch and what they unload in the port. The data are collected in real time at the agency headquarters in the Spanish city of Vigo. From these data, conclusions can be drawn about whether someone is violating the existing fishing rules. So the job of the inspectors is to ensure compliance with the EU rules. For this reason, they also work closely with authorities of the respective EU countries. The mission of the agency as the European Fishery Control Agency is to, to promote the best standard of compliance to the EU regulation and to some extent to the uh, uh, rules applying in the uh, regional fishery management organization, uh, reach a uh, level playing field and to reach sustainability in order that uh, the uh, EU industry will be in the best economical situation for the future. Edelmiro Uyoa is a representative of the fishing industry. His association represents large trawlers that fish in open oceans around the world. These boats are away for weeks at a time, catch up to 150 tons of fish per trip and process them immediately on board. For European ships, the EU's regulations apply. They must have adequate social standards on board, use only certain fishing methods and not exceed their yearly fishing quotas. There, out in the deep sea, they're competing with fishing fleets that do not follow any regulations. 100 million square kilometers are now being fished so intensely that the local ecosystems are at risk of collapse. That's one third of all of the oceans. Fishing is a global business, but unfortunately, the fishing fleets do not follow the same regulations. In the tema of compartir resources with countries that are not from the Union Europea, we have a lot of problems. We know that these fleets do not assume los mismos sistemas ni los mismos controles que, que tiene la Unión Europea y sin embargo sus capturas acaban en el mercado comunitario y eso no nos parece razonable. 
Not surprisingly, EU fishing fleets want all other fishing fleets to follow the same rules as the European boats. It is estimated that 20% of the fish sold in Europe comes from fishing fleets that do not follow any rules. This overfishing is accelerating the collapse of many fish species. One of the roles of the European Fisheries Control Agency is to provide knowledge transfer to other countries to improve their fishing practices. That, ultimately, should help to keep the oceans healthy. So we, we have been uh, involved in some training of third countries in order that uh, the standard will be closer and more compliant uh, to, uh, to EU, uh, to EU, uh, to EU standards or to international standards and that uh, we could uh, one day reach a level playing field uh, at a global level. Vamos por aquí. 108, 6, 104, 2 a pie. Olas de la columna. The Spanish city of Vigo is the site of the largest fishing fleet in the country. In fact, it is one of the most important fishing ports in the world. At first glance, not much can be felt of the fishing crisis. Every day, 2,000 tons of fish are processed here. Each box contains 10 to 30 kilograms of fish. Over 1,000 such cases, bulging with fish, come here every day on their journey to markets all over the world. Fish caught according to sustainable fishing rules may cost more, but it does not destroy the ecosystem in the way that unregulated fishing does. Consumers play a big role in determining the future of fisheries. In the EU, the average annual fish consumption is 22 kilos of fish per person. The Spaniards traditionally eat well over 30 kilograms of fish per person per year. And the European appetite for fish can no longer be covered by European fishing boats alone. Europe now imports nearly two-thirds of its fish from abroad much of it from unregulated fishing fleets. A transparency of the supply chain is becoming increasingly important. This is the standard label you can find in, in the fish. He tells you about the seller, the, the area. This comes, for instance, from Ribeira. Ribeira is a small harbor close to, to, to the south. So it's around uh, 80 kilometers away from here. So this is, tells you that this is from a small harbor, local fisheries. So again, uh, in favor to the quality. You can find another with additional information, like uh, the name of the vessel. The labeling initiative that makes the entire journey of the fish from the net to the plate transparent is fully supported by the fishermen. We see it as very positive, because we could differentiate from the product that is fished in other latitudes, in other shapes, E que, e que non se atende tanto recurso como, como nos pensamos que atendemos. Antonio García Ayut is an ecologist and social anthropologist. He's in charge of a project on the northwest coast of Spain that is investigating yet another way to support sustainable fisheries. The central aim is to create local institutions and to involve fishermen in a system of co-management of their fisheries. This is because each region, each ecosystem, has its own rules, which are best understood by those who work locally in it, day in, day out. If we want to avoid a collapse of the and we want to construir a mar, an ocean with life, Eh, os productores, os usuarios dos recursos pesqueiros e o Estado teñen necesariamente que dialogar, eh, que dialogar e construir conjuntamente as propostas de xestión. Active cooperation of all stakeholders is a model for managing local fishing resources. This cooperation can take on the form of co-managed marine protected areas. Such co-managed areas may be essential for sustaining ocean biodiversity and the long-term survival of local fishing communities on the Galician coast. I think that the tool of the de zona congestionada should be the future, especially in these zones of coast. 
que non temos non temos mai salida que que a pesca. Just like here in Galicia, many coastal communities around the world are dependent on fishing. The well-being of the oceans and the survival of the fishing communities is dependent on all of us pulling together as a team. And indeed, changes are taking place. The EU has brought forward a new common fisheries policy that is based on respecting the ocean's ecosystems. This should help to keep our oceans healthy and to support the livelihood of fishermen for future generations.